Hey guys, how's it going? Oscar here, back with another video. Today I'm going to be breaking down a couple of bases in here, some old school sounds and some sort of newer uh, concept ideas that I've got going on. Just before I get into the video, I want to uh, give a quick shout out to the, the Patreon. So in here, if you sign up to the Extra Content Patreon, which is £10 a month, um, you get a, a template from me for helping you start your tracks to clean up your mixes whilst you're producing. You get extra unreleased content from me. So all the tracks that I produce, you get them early. Um, there's, extra, there's an extra two videos a week on top of the ones that are already on YouTube. You also get an extra live stream which is a minimum of an hour long. It's usually about two hours. And you also get all the bass patches and like uh, any audio processing and like the chains that I use in my videos. They're all uploaded in the Patreon. And you also get like extra wavetables and uh, things for any of the serum patches that I do. So consider signing up and I'll let you carry on with the video. Cool, so jumping in here. We've got a few different sounds. So I'll, th in this orange group, uh, it's all basically the same patch. And then we've got some of the old, more old school sounds here. So, before I jump into the orange patches, I'm going to show you guys the purple ones because they're nice and simple. So, this purple, this one here, the pitch drop, is just basically a kick, um, but sustained. So it's just a simple sine wave with a pitch envelope, and the envelope here is just like a short little triangular shape with like seven milliseconds of attack and uh, about a second, second and a half decay with a low pass filter because the pitch envelope is, um, is really high pitch. So I just pulled down and shaved off the top end. This is a basic patch. It's a really simple patch, but it's just a great sound that's, that everyone's really familiar with. It's a um, basic sign, FMing a sign. Uh, the course of the first oscillator is only is just left as it is at standard, and then the second one above that is is uh, twice the twice the amplitude, so the course is set to two. And then what I've done is maxed out the output volume and increased the attack on the second oscillator. No, I've not added an envelope to this, but what I've done is I've brought down the filter so the uh, the high end is rolled off because if I open this filter up I drop the volume down and if I open that up it's quite it's quite an aggressive sound that I wanted it to be quite dark because the rest of the sounds on this track are pretty dark so let's jump into this patch because it's pretty complex in terms of all its routing so Rather than breaking down what I've done with these, because all I've done really is change the EQ, added like an auto pan to create that LFO effect, and I've moved around the distortion bands. But if I break down one of the patches, then you'll understand how all of them are made. So this this bottom one here, that I'll label white, is the sub. So that's going to clean out just a basic sine wave. Uh, through the utility and out, so it's super clean. Then we get into this bass here, like the mid bass. Now, what I've done is sent this through a couple different routings. Um, basically, this bottom patch is being is a simple FM patch. That's being run through an amp. So let me break down the, the, where the operators are. So what I've done is pretty similar to the original patch um, for, for this one down here. But what I've done here 
is if I turn off all the processing. It's just like the in, the beginning of that other sound. And then what I've done is with the FM from the os operator above that is I've made it lower than the than the tuning of the one that's been FM'd by the first one. Ow. And what that's doing is um what what that's doing is just creating a, a deeper, like more harmonic harmonically dense, but a deeper sound rather than the higher sound that you get from FM. So it's frequency modulating it up in pitch and then down in pitch to create like a really rich sound. And then that's being driven through a filter really heavily. So the top end's really rich. And then there's another in the other instrument rack above it, there's a another patch which is going on. So basically the same patch, but one um hang on, let me see this. So one operator is So it's the same patch. What I'm gonna do is break down this one here. So first one is a sine wave left on normal as it is with a bit of an attack. The second operator has got a longer attack of about a second and that's uh, double the frequency set to minus 12. The one above that is a square wave that's modulating this sine wave. The course is up by 8 and the level is at minus 22. Now feeding into this effects chain it's um, it's quite a different way of processing sounds. So what I'm going to do is open this all up and show you what I'm doing. So first of all, this sound. Wait, let me turn it all, all back on. So this sound is being run through an amp. If I turn this down. So what that's done is taken away some of the low end because that's being replaced with the sub underneath. And I've set the gain to full and taken down the bass and the treble settings on this boost mode on the amp. Now, what this is doing is just really focusing in on that mid range than the lower mids and just adding a bunch of dirt in those frequencies. Then what I've done is added a flanger. No, I've not added an envelope to this, but what I've done is I've brought down the filter so that uh, the high end is rolled off because uh, if I open this filter up I drop the volume down and if I open that up it's quite it's quite an aggressive sound that I wanted it to be quite dark because the rest of the sounds on this track are pretty dark so let's jump into this patch because it's pretty complex in terms of all its routing so Rather than breaking down what I've done with these, because all I've done really is change the EQ, added like an auto pan to create that LFO effect, and I've moved around the distortion bands. But if I break down one of the patches, then you'll understand how all of them are made. So this this bottom one here, that I'll we'll label white, is the sub. So that's going to clean out just a basic sine wave. Uh, through the utility and out, so it's super clean. Then we get into this bass here, like the mid bass. Now, what I've done is sent this through a couple different routings. Um, basically, this bottom patch is being is a simple FM patch. That's being run through an amp. So let me break down the, the where the operators are. So what I've done is pretty similar to the original patch um, for for this one down here. But what I've done here is if I turn off all the processing. It's just like the in, the beginning of that other sound. And then what I've done is with the FM from the, the os operator above that is I've made it lower than the 
than the tuning of the one that's been f FM'd by the first one. Ow. And what that's doing is um what what that's doing is just creating a, a deeper, like more harmonic harmonically dense, but a deeper sound rather than the higher sound that you get from FM. So it's frequency modulating it up in pitch and then down in pitch to create like a really rich sound and then that's being driven through a filter really heavily so the top end's really rich and then there's another in the other instrument rack above it there's a, another patch which is going on so basically the same patch but one um Hang on, let's see this. So one operator is so it's the same patch. What I'm going to do is break down this one here. So first one is a sine wave left on normal as it is with a bit of an attack. The second operator has got a longer attack of about a second, and that's uh, double the frequency set to minus twelve. The one above that is a square wave that's modulating this sine wave. The course is up by 8 and the level is at minus 22. Now, feeding into this check effects chain, it's, um, it's quite a different way of processing sounds. So what I'm going to do is open this all up and show you what I'm doing. So first of all, this sound. Wait, let me turn it all, all back on. So this sound is being run through an amp. If I turn this down. So what that's done is taken away some of the low end because that's being replaced with the sub underneath. And I've set the gain to full and taken down the bass and the treble settings on this boost mode on the amp. Now. What this is doing is just really focusing in on that mid-range and the lower mids and just adding a bunch of dirt in those frequencies. Then what I've done is added a flanger. So this is what the, this is what it sounds like before the flanger and then after. So what the flanger is doing is delaying the signal and, and like feeding it back into itself like with the dry signal over an LFO. But what I've done is turned off the LFO so that it's, there's no movement, but the delayed signal is uh, just feeding back on the, on this um, this little button down here. There's a negative and a positive. And if I open this up, I can probably. So yeah, it's the feedback polarity. So it has a different tone. If I sh show it with you, off, and then off, or like plus and minus. Sorry, so. Plus minus this changes like what frequencies are being cancelled out because obviously if the if the polarity is not flipped there'll be some phasing issues but then if it is flipped then there won't be and vice versa depending on what signal you're throwing into it so that's just creating like a more of a high end sort of sound so it's taking this like low end dirt and then it's just pushing it all up a little bit and creating a bit more of an aggressive signal now I didn't want all that high end, so I added an auto filter. I didn't want all that high end in one go, so I added an auto filter, which is which has got an LFO on it. It's a bandpass, and this is what it sounds like before and then after. So it's like sweeping through the lower mids, every, you know, on every on the one of every beat. Now you can see here. There's some uh, a very little energy going on in the high end and quite a lot going on down here. So what I wanted to do is create two different distortions. One which was really harsh in the high end and then one which was not as harsh but still present in the low end. So if I turn this high overdrive on where the band is in the high end, you can hear that the highs are accentuated. And then I put it on the low end sound. And it just beefs up the mid the mid range, and in total with the sub, sounds like this. Mm. 
and yeah that's that's how i made that sound that sound all comes together from the layers and then the distortion filtering it away so that you've only got the harmonics that you want to play with and then adding a little saturation to those on the end it's um it, it's been an approach with some of the sounds that i've been making for some, some of the more aggressive deeper dubstep sounds and it's a it's a, it's a unique technique of like thinking right i'm going to create a bunch of harmonics from an fm signal or from anything and then distort them create some spatial effects in the high end and then filter those away and then distort again because you know distorting once or like if you don't have if you don't have enough harmonic content and then you start introducing filters and moving them around you're going to have dips in the signal and you can compress and stuff to get around that but it's much easier just to have a more harmonically complex signal to start off with then filter and modulate and then distort after that because once you distort and then you filter out you've lost a lot of the you've lost a lot of the character of the sound because you, you're taking out the character that you've added beforehand so you want to add that back in afterwards if you want the more dark and aggressive sound and yeah like f fil filtering and distorting on either end I mean, distorting on either end of a filter is, is quite important for those crazy sounds. And then if you want to get a bit more funky with how they, they sit in the mix uh, spatially, then you want to throw reverbs on them like this. Because that is that sound. But just uh, with a bit of an attack and... Uh, all I did was bounce it to audio and then added some fades on the end of it to create, like, create some sort of wobble. And I boosted some frequencies that needed accentuating on those. And yeah, I'll play it again one more time. So yeah, uh, I hope you liked today's video, guys. Uh, leave leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, you know, for any future video suggestions that you want to see, and. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the Patreon. I do more videos like this and deeper dives into my tracks and exclusive live streams and one-to-one -one lessons. It's all there. It's all in the information. I'll leave the link in the description below. And if you haven't seen it already, go check out my last video for 500 subscribers. I'm giving away a sample pack for the people on my Patreon and a separate sample pack, a separate copy of the sample pack for people that leave a, a like, a comment, and also subscribe to the channel on that video. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.